I think we're supposed to go. You never said the word go. You can still talk in my ear, Dave Piper. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're like a well-oiled machine around here. Uh, how you doing, Jim McCormick? How are you? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'll say hello. I'm fr- 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 frantic. Uh, I've been recording a lot of things in many different media for many different people. But it's fun. Is can can you tell me the date? Is it August thirty first? It's the vortex of wide receiver threes. You're just gonna keep talking about them every day, forever. <laughs> it's it's fortunately not always wide receiver talk, but often, often, often it is. Um, so we're here live streaming for you as folks uh, trickle in. This is a wide receiver themed live stream. We're brought to you by DraftKings. I'll talk a little more about DraftKings as we get going, but. Uh, in the meantime, we have. I, I did get some pre-questions from the Facebook group just in case we had uh, we had the slow trickle of people coming in to watch. And of course, if you're watching this after the fact, we're probably not going to answer your question right away in real time. But we will answer hopefully a bunch of things that you're interested in, including. Uh, I don't actually have a question, Dave Piper, <laughs> um, but I think you want to give me the first one, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll. See. See what happens. Uh, there it is. It's uh, it's from Jamie Phillips. This is a pre-asked question, and it gives us our 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 thumbnail for the night because I think it's a good a good sort of capstone receiver type question, which is when the rubber meets the road. If you were to have one must draft wide receiver at his current draft price, Jim, for fantasy football in 2024, who would that receiver be? Well, being my punctuation love, I'm taking the hyphenated receiver. I'm taking Jackson Smith and Jigba. <laughs> Um, oh, nice! I just think he's due uh, of the of the, the the leap players like natural leap, which is year one to two. Um, we've discussed it. But you you disagreed to a, a, a degree about the Tyler Lockett <laughs> uh, decline, but that's what makes this interesting, and that's why I think his ADP is stuck where it is. He's um, in the eighties in most sites overall, in the mid to late forties in most sites in, at the position. I just think there's value there for an ascendant player. Um, once his his college position coach said he's the best guy ever, so that must be <laughs> Brian Hartline, uh, a Miami Dolphins legend. Uh, so it, it must be true. So yes, but I, I do like the I do like the I, I like him. I like the must have must draft nature of it because it's very easy to 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 secure him if that's what you want. So tell me the round that. You find yourself. You've done some mock drafts here. You find yourself thinking about Smith and Jigbud. You know, like you're saying, the good thing is you really don't have to line him up as a player who has to start for sure on your fantasy team. What's the round you're thinking of? Yeah, right when like the flex starts coming in, like eighth, uh, and he's obviously going the ninth, tenth. Uh, I can even see different formats where he goes even a little bit later. But yeah, around there, around that where I've had my core. So maybe as early as the seventh, but usually eighth, ninth. Okay. I mean, we, we talked about when you were on the podcast, we talked about Tyler Lockett being not your favorite on film from this past year. And whether I agree or not, it's clear that in the, eventually it's trending in that direction. The question is how soon. And I think I agree with you at I, this, the price of Smith JSN feels okay to me, but, uh, like the idea of being a little early feels fine because the price doesn't make you spend a starting fantasy pick. And, one thing I kind of can't see, and we said this in the podcast, is JSN as like such a pure slot guy. He was one of the purest slot guys of all qual- qualified receivers last year when that had been Tyler Lockett's job. So it's very clear these were training wheels. And maybe, you know, maybe you argue that's the old coaching staff and maybe not a great sign of what they thought of JSN's readiness for the NFL. But um, his skill set is certainly supposed to be more than that. Yeah, I think he can win all over the field. We saw it in college. Uh yeah, I, I mean, I'm still talking about Ohio State. That might not be the best thing, uh, but, but 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 no, I, there's something about this where usually there is a price in for a, a, a talented. I mean, look, it's all relative. He was the top receiver in his class, but that's all relative. Uh, I just think sure. there's a leap coming. So was Jerry Judy, but I just think there's a leap coming. Uh, or no, it wasn't Jerry Judy <laughs> right. actually; it was somebody else. But yeah, we'll move on. <laughs> all right, I'm moving on uh, to my must draft. I'm going to give you two must drafts, and they both are going to wind up being. Flag players, and if you're watching this live, you're getting the information before people are actually hearing it on the podcast on Friday. If you're thinking early round must draft, when I get to the fourth round and I see Stefan Diggs still there, I definitely take him. 
And I will say, Jim, that I've been doing a lot of drafts, a lot of real drafts, a lot of mock drafts, and that feels less common now than it did two weeks ago. I was really seeing Stefan Diggs legitimately fourth or fifth round with Nico Collins in the second as of just a couple weeks ago. And I don't think it's me with like a control of the market. I don't think I have that big of a listenership. I appreciate the listenership, but it's not quite that big. Um, and I, I just think people are sort of, oh, wait a minute. It may be that he didn't forget how to play football for the last three months of last year, and there may have been something else going on. I, I don't believe that he fell off a cliff. The production was too good for the first like six weeks last year. And I love the landing spot. And I have him rated as like a second round pick, but you don't have to take him there. For sure, if you're picking towards the end of the third, early fourth, that seems like the sweet spot. If you're picking early third and you have to wait till late fourth, you might miss out on him. But I, I really am, I'm actually okay if you take him early third. I, I think it's going to work out great. D before I give my later round guy, do you, do you have a digs feeling strong yeah. one or the other? Well, yeah, I think the market, like, um, <clears throat> Just people in general, not just the market, but like humans just react to stuff like that. There's like he's done. It's it's declarative. His decline is is cemented. It just seems like that's like a known thing or something. As if, right. and it's also we take these. It's a, I don't know if it's an arbitrary endpoint, but like he he was like wide receiver five for the first ten or whatever. So it's like almost like well no, but at week twelve he just became bad. That's when he that's when he stopped playing football. <laughs> So it's just interesting. Like we can choose our arbitrary. Whereas, say he finished strong, we would never say that. Like ever. Right. right. If he if he started off and had ten straight bad weeks, I understand why we wouldn't do that. Right. But we still would also segment it and say the last thing we saw is just so pronounced. Is all I'm getting at. So yeah. It's a fair point. It would be much, much better for my case if he'd been good at the end and not good at the beginning. He would be um, going close to Nico Collins. For that's sure. right. Um, and he might not be with Nico Collins. So. And like, th I think it was, you know. I don't think we're ever going to know what happened at the end of Buffalo. I don't think there's a tell all biography coming, but uh, like he was still trying hard. He was still open a fair amount of the time. He still got tons of defensive attention. The offense just kind of decided not to throw it to him. And I think that became like an institutional decision. This is better for us as they started winning, you know, and this is like better for us institutionally. If we, if we throw to the open receiver, as opposed to forcing it to Steph Diggs. And I've, I've said my piece. All right. So the other guy, I, I, I am, I mean, he's cheap, he's free. So like, I'm not, I'm not telling you draft him as a starter, but Cortland Sutton was on my flag player list last year and he's still not going in the top 100 overall players. And like, you want to argue that you're scared of the Denver offense. You're allowed to be, you're scared of the quarterback. You're allowed to be, but only to a point because we're wrong about situations all the time. Nobody thought Houston's offense was any good last year this time. And on a bad team with a bad quarterback. Russell Wilson stinks too. Cortland Sutton was a touchdown monster because he's one of the best end zone receivers in the league. I don't think that changes. And and I can get him at a price once again. I'm, it might even be cheaper than last year where, come on, he's a must draft. Just st stick him on my bench. Let's see how it looks for the first month. If I have to wind up getting rid of him because he's stuck in a place that he wasn't last year, great. It didn't cost anything. Otherwise, there's a chance I'm starting him at flex pretty quick. Yeah, what's interesting is also that like just the the target competition went down, and, and I guess perceptionally the, the 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 quarterback thing got worse, but it it really didn't. It's Did just, it? Yeah, it's kind of the same. And again, like Sean Payton for all for all the 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 for, for I don't know for for whatever he might deserve, there is something to the extent that he's made like Jameis Winston, Teddy Bridgewater the ghost of Russell Wilson, like look manageable, especially for fantasy purposes. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is another like sustainable, normal fantasy offense that was left for dead. This is the year where certain situations are left for dead. And that's one of them. I think although I think in the last several years, that's been, there's this piling on theory of, of, of offenses that are left for dead. And I totally agree. Denver, absolutely. One of them. Uh, we'll get back to more topics, receiver topics here in a second. Let me thank DraftKings for being our longtime sponsor on the channel. Uh, we very much appreciate it. If you're looking for a place to maybe play the NFL futures market, they've got a very robust NFL futures market where you can bet on team win totals. You can find a video that I'm sure at some point in the future, Dave will link to inside this video where Jim and I gave our favorite win total bets for 2024, of course, player props for the season and tons more. And then when the games start also just good to have that DraftKings account. And if you don't have a, the DraftKings app, you download it, you use the promo code Harris tube, all one word, 
Harris Tube. Uh, you make one five dollar bet, they'll give you one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets instantly that you can play around with and 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 make a few extra bets. We want you to bet very very responsibly. I'm able to do like five dollars a game. I don't do any more than that. I'm in it for the. That gives me enough excitement. I don't need the mortgage riding on it. Please don't do that. But again, we do thank DraftKings, and uh, they they make this possible, and we do appreciate them. Use that code Harris Tube when you download the app. Make one five dollar bet, you'll get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets. Thank you to DraftKings. Okay, Michael Colton asks this question. It's a really good one. Uh, how do you navigate? CD Lamb and Jamar Chase and their holdouts in fantasy drafts. A lot of drafts are going to start this coming weekend. Do you draft them like they're playing for sure? Do you fear that they themselves will be extra cautious with injuries if they don't get their guaranteed money? And uh, Michael brings up Justin Jefferson, like maybe he held himself out extra long last year after he got hurt. It, just the, the whole thing about a holdout receiver. Are you at the point, Jim, where you're already shying away from taking them? Uh, it, it, I guess it's a differentiator. I'm higher on the backs, the early backs, than most people, but that's not really the question. The question is these guys. Uh, yeah. it, it has affected me to a small degree. So, yeah. like, maybe, maybe like, for example, like, if I originally, going into the season, like, chased a little bit over Jefferson, and now, for example, like, because of this question mark and because of the timing of Jefferson over him, also his quarterback situation is a little bit more, like, I just know what it is now. It's not going to change. But in any case, yeah, it, it does affect it. Not to a big degree, but maybe if it's a small wrinkle between two very close players in ADP. I'm not sliding these guys very far, but it could be a differentiator. I would let it be a differentiator this late, but I, I also am still confident they're playing, to be honest. So uh, there's a little bit of risk, but maybe I'm saying I'm moving one or two spots. Good answer, and I kind of agree that, you know, in the case of these two particular receivers, these two holdout guys who are doing nothing— they're going so high in drafts that you do have very good alternatives, but my overall ranks already have Bijan Robinson and Brees Hall ahead of them. And so there aren't that many draft positions where I don't wind up getting one of those guys because receivers just go so quickly in drafts right now. Um, the, the philosophy of the question that Michael's asking is also very good and hard to be one size fits all on for me. Like, I tend to think that players play, but can I say that that there has no effect? Of course I can't. I just don't know the effect and usually it's like it's like all the stuff that I feel like we're not good at telling beforehand, I try to just not factor in too much. So CD Lamb's mental state over his contract falls in the same thing as I don't really believe we know what schedules are hard and easy. That we change our minds within 2 weeks after the season starts and various off-field things like that. I, I I recognize that they can affect it. I just don't know which way they would affect it. And I'm, generally speaking, not going to change ranks based on them. Yeah, that works. Yeah, nobody was chasing that Houston Texans offense uh, until they were, right? Like, meaning perception right, changes very quickly. Yeah, so yeah, uh, that's, ab that's absolutely, true. absolutely true. All right. Uh, Omar Sanchez asks the question, would you be good with Jalen Waddell as your wide receiver one for fantasy this year? No, that would be difficult for me, um, particularly because, like, the share between him, like, at least I'm expecting it to continue. It's just, like, Tyreek Hill gets so many of the valuable targets, uh, and he's awesome. I love Jalen Model, but no, I'd be uncomfortable. He'd be – I just think there's probably 12 to 15 guys. Like, yeah, I have Waddle around that range where he's a wide receiver, too, so I would be uncomfortable. I would want a wide receiver one in this economy. <laughs> I have uh, my wide receiver 23, so I would very yeah, much so, not yeah. be into it. And and I will say, this is nothing against Jalen Waddle. I think he's a, a, a good player. If I have a complaint about him, it's hands. Um, I think he has lapses, and that can get him in the doghouse just a little bit. Uh, I do recall a, a time long, long in the dis distant past when uh, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith, and T. Higgins all got drafted like in the second or at the very latest early third round as the second receivers on their teams, but still being drafted as wide receiver ones. And I recall not particularly liking that idea and kind of being vindicated that that's not really that smart of an idea. I guess, you know, the team that two teams, maybe that we're doing that with this year would be if Brandon Ayuk stays and Debo Samuel, they're both 
you know, borderline wide receiver ones, and then Stefan Diggs and Nico Collins, depending on what you think of Diggs, that's a big investment in an offense. And maybe I'm a little more willing to do it with those guys because they haven't burned me yet. And the Dolphins kind of, the Dolphins, Bengals, and Eagles all kind of did last year. Yeah, I mean, the one arg- and the argument for these teams is the concentration, right? This really high, highly concentrated Dolphins offense. But that's also, again, like we everything can change. You talked about predicting everything. That's like saying as if last year's – I keep talking about share as if I know who, who's going to get the ball. It could change this year. There could be a third or fourth option in Miami that changes that. Meaning so much of what you like about Waddle is this idea that he's – He's like the true 1A. Not that that's going to change, but that pie is very concentrated to those top two or three guys. I'm not the biggest fan of the Waddle guy, so I agree. I got burnt in that Devonta Smith is a one thing before, and it didn't feel very good. So Yeah, it's, t- it's funny, though. I mean, you know, I could see Cooper Cup getting healthy. Uh, we're not going to draft Cup in that range, though. But like, he's been there before. Yeah, he, right. So, he, but he's been there yeah. before. It's fair. I mean, Waddle's been there before, too, I guess, before Tyreek was there. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably it's a little hypocritical to say, yeah, gangbusters on the Texans and Niners, and no way on Jay and Waddle, that'd be a disaster. And it's because I just saw it not work on that team. It may be a little hypocritical. But the answer, Omar, for both of us, is no, we probably would not be that comfortable. Uh, Ian Hurlbert asks, are any of the Buffalo Bills wide receivers worth owning, or is Dalton Kincaid the only pass catcher worth the draft price so it's i guess it's not you know i think there are gonna be a lot of bills receivers drafted but they're gonna be drafted pretty low and what ian wants to know is uh you know if you're do you think you should bother in the ninth round or whatever as a reserve with any bills receivers um uh, yes like, I don't mind Curtis Samuel. I can't quit Curtis Samuel. I know that we should stop this. We should stop this silly ruse. And I love that every time it has to do with, like, some, like, fired offensive coordinator that ends up with him. They're like, but he knew him from Carolina. It's like, yeah, but was that a good situation? Right. But in any case, he does know, uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, Joe Brady. It's somebody. It's Joe Brady, yeah, yeah. From, from, from Carolina. So there we go. They're buddies. He's going to give him the ball. That means he's going to be the offense. No, really, I think there's something there that's kind of fun. Um, but it's just because it's, 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 you said it, it's because where he's going. Uh, it's harder for me to believe the Khalil Shakir thing, but then again, that's probably why he's going to be the best one of all of them. <laughs> um, but no, I, I do agree. It's like there's, there's no consensus. The only consensus is that, that nobody wants to make a decision on these guys, uh, which I don't know if there is one to be made, like you said. They could spread this all around. I have Curtis Samuel of all of them. He's going... One thirteenth overall, based on uh, football guys. So yeah, yeah. I I think Keon Coleman is because he's the happy, surprising, fun uh, upside package that nobody's ever seen in a game that matters. He goes higher. He's the only one among the Bills who goes in the top one hundred. But he goes in the you know in eighth round. Like I'm not mad at that. It's fine. It's really like I I get a rep, probably rightly so, for for talking bad about rookies, but. If I'm talking about about rookies for redraft leagues in fantasy, it's guys who go in the round one, round two, maybe round three. Like th- that's usually for me to to a bridge too far, as they say. Uh, it, it, you know, this this rookie's go- going whatever ninety third overall. Like I'm not going to get mad at you for that. That's no, fine. Him and Brian Tom. Him and Brian Thomas are right around each other. Yeah. I don't mind where they're going. The, the crowd it's, hasn't gone nuts on those. Yeah. Right. It's fine. It's okay. And and to some degree, I understand why you would take Keon Coleman on a fantasy bench before you would want Curtis Samuel or Khalil Shakir because Curtis Samuel has a long life and history of getting yeah. hyped by certain people and then turning into a gadget player and being good on an NFL team and just fine. And frankly, he was annoying with the commanders last year because he did yes. touch the ball a lot, just never enough to really be a, f- he's the Tyler Boyd of, of Curtis Samuels, you know? Yes, yes. He, yes. He's always going to drain, and he's never going to like really be the pure focus, and I kind of feel like that's probably what's coming here. My answer is that all of them are draftable. Pick one. It's fine. Take Coleman if you like the shiny upside. I got no problem with that. But again, because the price is right, we're talking ninth, 10th, 11th round, and I don't mind you taking a shot on guys there. The upside play is, in a PPR, you could argue maybe the upside play is Samuel, but I, I'm going to say the upside play is probably Keon Coleman. Uh, all right, there let's you. continue. Uh, David says, uh, how badly would a Brandon Ayuk move hurt his fantasy value? And of course, the, for the folks who are watching this after we recorded it, 
Uh, you may already, you're from the future and you already may know the resolution to Brandon Ayuk. As of our recording this, we're told that a deal is in place with the Steelers and yet somehow the deal has not happened. And now there's this feeling that people are leaking. He's going to return to the team. And so basically it's in limbo and Jim and I sitting here, we don't know whether he's getting traded. Let's assume it was to the Steelers though. If, if you heard tomorrow that Brandon Ayuk was a Pittsburgh Steeler, what does that do to his rank? Um, it lowers it a little bit because I just think I, I, I know that he has this competition with these other with, with with regards to Debo and everything, but but it's also something I've seen before and I've seen it work just as recently as last year. And uh, so it's a very efficient offense. It's one of these that can be repeatedly efficient, it seems, with Shanahan. Not sure that that Arthur Smith. I just feels bad to go to an Arthur Smith situation from Kyle Shanahan. So it feels like a slight downgrade. I wouldn't go crazy over it. I also think the counterpoint would be, oh, he's the guy. He's the gem. Look at all these targets. I can see that. I just think I'd rather have Brock Purdy and say 120 targets versus 150. So, yeah. I mean, is, doesn't, that, doesn't this conversation absolutely put the lie to a lot of the nonsense reasons that people give for liking or not liking players? All we've been told for years is, now, Brandon Ayuk's not a good fantasy receiver because there's too many mouths to feed. What are you even talking about? And then we're going to send him to somewhere where there's George Pickens is there, but there's a lot fewer mouths that you fear and, and people are going to go, Oh no, that's worse. You know, it just shows you that what matters much more is the player and what we think of situation matters. We're just trying to make situation matter as little as possible in our assessment. I don't think it wrecks Brandon Ayuk's fantasy value. I'm going to try to make a, a situation change matter as little as possible in my assessment of it, but it's going to matter some and he's going to get, into like the range of, you know, if he's my maybe 10 receiver right now, he might go to 14 or 16 or something like that. Cause it does matter. I try, I, I trust Brock Purdy as crazy as it sounds a lot more than either of the jokers in Pittsburgh. Exactly. Like you just said, Jim, and like it, it needs to matter. He's not going to be a second round pick for me anymore, but he probably still will be in a third. Cause I think he's a really good player. I think what's interesting is that I don't think it would change like that, that that's true and that that's not that big of a move but it is I guess at that level of player but I don't think I don't think fans of the market would change as much just because the offset would be volume you know like right. 150 targets so so I I I think the shiny new toy thing would still kind of come into play even though it's true that you'd still rather stay in the place that people have been begging him to get out of so yeah, <laughs> yeah I, like the you know the I think the point is that different people would be yelling, right? Yes. You'd still hear lots of noise. It'd be just be different people. The people who wanted the vol the guaranteed volume would be like, Oh, I am now, Oh, I have the vapors, you know? And, and, uh, and now the people who were like, wait, I loved him just catching passes from a good quarterback in Kyle Shanahan's space age offense. I don't want uh freaking Arthur Smith. You know, it's not what I'm, it's not on there. So like, I think you, you're probably right. It would sort of like, it would go a little lower, but there'd be some equilibrium between those two groups. Absolutely. Um, uh, for, for the folks who are in here in the room with us right now, uh, ask questions. We will, we will do our best. We're going to hang out for 10, 15 more minutes. We would love to have them. I'm, I'm kind of still, Dave is, uh, cycling us through some pre-asked questions, but, but please in the chat, uh, hit us up with your questions. Uh, Brett Graham from the glorious city of Los Angeles, California says, which would be the riskier double up Jim, if you were going to take two receivers from the same team? Would you feel that it's riskier to take the Bears guys, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, or riskier to take the Rams guys, Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup? I'd probably say the Bears guys because I think Adunze might just be. That's a good point. Really good, and uh, mm -hmm. it just could be. It could it could split things a little bit more. I don't think there is a top ten receiver just sneaking around, <laughs> uh, you know, at Los Angeles. But yeah, no, I just think again we talked about concentration of offense. We kind of have an idea how the LA thing goes. Of course, there's the banged up idea already with with Puka, but I just it, it meaning Miami has this incredible one two guys. You know they're going to get so much of the bandwidth. I think that's true there. I don't really know how Chicago's going to work. I'd like to say I do, but I don't. And I think Rome is going to be enough of a factor that I have too, too many questions. That's a great point. I kind of wasn't thinking about it because I've. It's not like I'm ignoring Roma Dunze's existence. Everybody tells me he's a great prospect. It just feels like. If ever there's a team that can bring a guy along slowly, we might get the JSN treatment out of Chicago to help him get his. But maybe he's ready. You're right. You're absolutely right. Maybe he's ready to be 
the upside guy on that entire team and everybody else. So like that, whatever percent chance that is does not exist in Los Angeles. That is really fair. Um, how would I answer this question? I think I'd actually say the Rams pair would be. It depends on where you have to take cup. If you can get away with cup, not as a drafting him, not as a fantasy starter, then I would say that would be the one I would want because then the injury to the cut to cup would benefit Nakua to such a point where you'd be like, I don't care that I'm missing Cooper cup because I took him in the sixth round and it's fine. And, and like an injury would almost be good news to one of them because then the other one would really, really feast. Um, but I just don't think, I think cup is trending upward in terms of draft position. So I worry like where, where are we seeing cup go as of our recording this right now? Are you on that site? Yeah, I am. Uh, so he's here. 31 overall yes it's like yeah, now we're 31. talking third round so are we really gonna t- i mean the, the, maybe the point is there's no way anybody sane is gonna get nakua in the second and cup in the third and be like yeah um but i think this question may have as presumed cup as a lower adp and at that point i would have gotten it because it's the rare case where an injury like would have been good news yeah it's like not a stack it's, it's a stack but it's not like an, it's not a, a handcuff but yeah you're consolidating that's awesome. really fair. Matt, Matt Stafford's uh, first text of the morning. So yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, we have uh, join game chat. Please uh, asks the question: Are there any uh, receivers in the sixth round and beyond you could see as serious level jumpers this year? And it is very hard to do open-ended questions like this, like just giving us, you know, like okay, of every receiver in the world, pick ones. But but I will just say. Uh, if Jim, you want to take a second to look at the list, I'll go sure. back to what I said at the very beginning of, of when we've answered our very first question, the theme of this thing, our, our must draft receiver. I'll just go back to Cortland Sutton again. Um, you know, he's not, he's not a level jumper in that we're going to view him as like a borderline hall of famer at some point, but just the level he's being drafted at is too much like the level he was drafted at last year. He's going, I mean, double digit rounds for sure. And I think that's crazy. Because even in a low volume season where Russell Wilson was garbage, I just saw circus catch after circus catch after circus catch and touchdowns. And, you know, the part of me would say about Cortland Sutton, well, look at the stat line, the, the touch, it looks like a touchdown outlier season. But as you watched it, what it looked like was every time the Broncos got desperate, they were like, please save us Cortland Sutton. And he did it like every time. And so I think a better season is ahead. So that would be my answer as a potential later round level jumper. Did anybody come to mind as you looked at your list, Jim? Yeah. I mean, uh, in addition to JSN, uh, I like Jahan Dotson a little bit. I just think some normalcy is going to return to Washington's offense and okay. he's just like left alone. He's very deep, like around like one fifty. He's like a twilight round guy. I think he could take a he leap. Is. Um, I also like Christian Watson. I think there's still like a guess of what's going to happen there. And at this point, like it's all baked in. He's going around the range you just mentioned uh, with regards to Keon Coleman, like right around his ADP. That's a uh, good point. I'm cool with that. I just think we're, we're really all in, at least not we, but like collectively people are into the love thing, but no one's identifying a receiver. It doesn't cost much to find out if, if his hamstrings weigh the same now. <laughs> and the, the, like, if you're talking about um, profile, of of the four guys, five guys, six guys that Green Bay has, only one of them is really different than the others. And that's right. clearly Christian Watson. He's the big size prospects for sure. Uh, Bo is me asks the question, would you rather have DK Metcalf or Malik Neighbors as a flex in a keeper league? Keeper league, I'm going to go Neighbors just because he's young and he's got a lot of highlights on Twitter recently. Um <laughs> And he starts fights at training camp. But no, it's really just age. And I also think uh, you spoke to it before about how, like, as cool as DK is and as, like, dominant as he is in his role, it's definitely within his role. Kind of like, I think his box is defined a little bit so far in the league. Maybe if he ever left, we've talked about what happens in Seattle in a few years. But, uh, yeah, I really like DK. But do they pay him all this money that the market's resetting? I'm babbling, but my point is I know what Neighbors is going to be for the next couple of years. Even if I don't know who his quarterback is, he's going to be the alpha in New York. So We love you for your babbling. Don't Never, never don't babble, Jim. That's clearly no. what we need yeah. out of you. You want, to be, you want to be really frustrated? As you were talking, I looked in the Almanac. It's the only place where I published my own dynasty ranks. And, and the question, Bo, Bo's question was not dynasty. Bo's question was keeper. So we're not sure if this is like career or whatever. But 
if you were talking dynasty, I have Malik Neighbors 35 overall. I have DK Metcalf 36 overall. So, hi, I'm a jerk, but uh, Malik Neighbors, I guess, is my answer by one. Uh, John Fox, not the John Fox, asks, uh, we know that Cousin Josh loathes any PPR at all. We know that Harris is against PPR, although not as strongly as Josh. How does the underscore Baron feel about precious, precious points being given for catching a football? <laughs> is he against it due to the higher numbers reminding him of the ever-present litigation fa- fees that he faces in his uh, lawsuit career? That's a lot of smart words. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to, to, to live in a PPR world. It can be difficult. Uh, I can get with Barons, and the PPR inflation can get to me. I mean, a bag of chips costs three catches now, you know? <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, uh, I, 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 I suppose I'm more of a half PPR guy, okay. you know, if, if we're going to get into the PPR world. But uh, you know what, though? It's convention. I, I get it now. Accept it. Live with it. Um, show, I love us your, people... show us your ESPN tattoo, Jim. It's here. Well, it's, it's, it's in a place I can't share because it was it was it was done in Cabo when you were in a retreat, and um, it's an ayahuasca thing. You're a company uh, man. You're a company yes. man. Um, yes. I'll, I'll ask you this question: You're in the league of American recreational gridiron enthusiasts. You're in large. You have been for years. That is a standard scoring league. There are no points per reception. How do you feel about it? It's good. I like it. It's uh, it's different. Um, especially like it when I my team scores a lot of points all year round <laughs> last year and then stops doing that. But no, it, there's a reliance on playmakers for sure, like real playmakers, touchdowns right. and big games. And yeah. uh, otherwise, yeah, if you're relying on gimmicks in that league, it's not going to go so well. Like if if, if yeah, Jared McLaughlin isn't going to save you. Jaleel, yeah, people. Jaleel um, or Jared. Or Jared. Yeah, he's really not going to save you. People have heard me give the speech, but just in case you haven't heard me, like the reason PPR became invented was because fantasy was really hard to win if you didn't pick one, two, or three and draft Priest Holmes and LaDainian Tomlinson and Sean Alexander and Edgerton. Sean Alexander, yeah. And they were looking for a way to level the playing field, and that's not the world anymore. And the leveler has become the bane of my existence. It's just stupid. It's just not a measure of who's good at football. It's like like tracking – uh, you know, you know, we we're we're getting rid of field goal kickers. That's another conversation, right? We're, a lot of a lot of leagues got rid of field goal kickers. That's why, because it's just injured. Matt Schaub, Matt Schaub led the league of passing when we went to CPR. <laughs> just to, the quality of the passing world that we were dealing with. We very much uh, uh, on on at least on the podcast are very anti PPR. It sounds like the answer to to the actual question here being asked is that Jim is actually pretty comfortable with half PPR, which yes. He's in, entitled to his incorrect opinion. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us, but we had a bunch of people watch this video and I know lots more are going to have watched it after we're done. Of course, ask more questions down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you or just tell us how crazy you think our opinions are. Um, we don't thank DraftKings because they keep sponsoring us and we're really, really grateful. Again, if you're looking for a place to play the games this year, Download the DraftKings app. It helps us out if you use that code HarrisTube, all one word. Uh, and and maybe you figure your way through. We're going to do some handicapping on this channel once the season gets going. And maybe you'll want to bet along with us. $5 a bet. That's what we bet, Jim. Five, $5 a bet. We don't go crazy with the betting, but it is fun. It's enough to make you root. That's what's fun. Uh, Jim, any final thoughts about the wide receiver market or just the world? Uh, just, I mean, wide receivers in the world, they kind of, they're always on my mind. Um, and we live in a wide receiver world and I'm just wondering who's playing this lot, you know, who's playing this lot. You're and always, is, you're... is, are we in 12 person now? I don't know. What are we in? What are we in? 21? <laughs> right, what are we doing? We're going to leave Jim to his existential crisis. I want to thank yeah. uh, Dave Piper for producing again. You're great, Dave. Jim, you're awesome too. You're all awesome for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.